Thanks. So, Antonio? Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Okay, so I'll move over here since I have the remote. Um, thank you and welcome um, to, to my presentation. Um, I would like to thank uh, Darren for the invitation, also Neve, who uh, couldn't be here. Um, so today I'll be talking to you about um, a project um, that myself and some colleagues have developed in Portugal um, uh, since 2012 um, in trying to come up with a um, local government transparency index. I will tell you a little bit about the motivations to this, um, to this project and uh, why I think it exemplifies uh, the good, uh, the profitable, good connection that should be uh, present in the relationship between academia, uh, the private sector, uh, the public sector, and uh, civil society. Um, so this is the summary. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the nature of the problem, why transparency is a uh, sort of a, a hot topic right now, and why it is relevant for for. Um, us studying public policy and uh, particularly at the local government level. I will give you some background on the literature, a very short background, you can read more about this um, in, in, in other um, uh, places. And the core of the presentation is the Portuguese Municipal Transparency Index and the motivations for it. Um, I will tell you a little bit of some findings. We, we ran some regressions trying to explain um, what uh, it, what justifies the differences in transparency between local governments, why some are more transparent than others. These are some preliminary findings, so um, I won't uh, spend too much time on this. And I will tell you a little bit about uh, what we intend to do in the future. So what motivated this research um, was the fact that um, a few years ago, probably about 15 years ago, um, some of my colleagues were doing um, uh, were starting a finance yearbook, a local finance yearbook. So they were trying to get uh, a lot of information regarding uh, local governments in, in financial and budgeting terms. So one of the first things that they did was ask the municipalities to provide them with the, the, the budget. And believe it or not, some municipalities, uh, sort of more remote areas, uh, sort of rural, were telling our um, researchers that uh, they weren't going to provide them with a budget because it was a classified document. And we thought, wait a minute, there's something wrong. This, this is approved in the municipal assembly, so in the municipal council, uh, but then when citizens want to access it, they, they do not have access to it. Um, there's all kinds of uh, limitations imposed and uh, so a common citizen that wants to access the budget of their own municipality cannot. And so this was partly the motivation for this work. Over time, these colleagues that work on the financial, the local finance yearbook, uh, were able to get all the budgets. So they eventually got the 308 uh, municipal budgets for all local governments in Portugal. And their work um, sort of progressed this way. But we, we sort of um, thought that, well, if this is happening uh, with financial information, this is probably a problem as well in other fields uh, in local government. So that's the sort of the motivation for starting a local um, uh, municipal transparency index. At the same time, um, since I was uh, linked to the United Nations uh, University uh, Unit on uh, Policy-Driven uh, Electronic Governance, it seems natural that these days, if it's not online or if it's not available in some digital format, then it's not transparent. And that's, that's largely the motivation for linking these um, different fields, is that um, sort of since very early uh, days of uh, ICT development, back in 2005 actually, um, uh, ICT scholars were already defining uh, transparency as the unfettered, uh, unfettered access by the public to timely and reliable information on decisions and performance in the public sector. Now we took this a little long, uh, a little further, and um, sort of came up with our own definition, sort of building on previous definitions, 
uh, saying that transparency implies the, the communication to the providing civil society with relevant information in a complete, timely, and easily accessible manner. And this has to be available online. So if it's not available online, even though the municipalities may argue that they're providing the information to someone who asks the information, it's not a proactive um, um, sort of disclosure of information. And that's partly the reason why uh, the, the index was, was sort of motivating uh, our work. What about transparency? So transparency is a hot topic right now in public administration, political science, and, and other, other <coughs> fields, and other related fields. And uh, sort of the, tr the uh, traditional explanations are that transparency can help uh, improve public scrutiny over um, local and national level um, government decisions, can improve participation, citizen participation, and accountability um, uh, in uh, different levels of government. Uh, it also enables, well, the idea is that transparency will enable um, citizens, the media, and all kinds of audit institutions, among other stake stakeholders, to monitor the activities of, of governments. Um, contrary to what we've seen in the past, these days, um, a lot of the information that gets developed uh, um, not only at the local level, but also at the national level, uh, is driven by citizens. So citizens want to see more about what government is doing. And so the idea to, is to have proactive disclosure of information that can be helpful for citizens, or if you want, if you prefer, citizen-centered or data user perspective, so a, a stakeholder focus. And this, as you shall see, was largely the reason why we developed our index based on the stakeholders approach. And that's, that's what distinguishing uh, in terms of our index compared to other indices that exist elsewhere. But we know that the effects of transparency are um, largely um, sort of uh, contextual. Uh, we know that, for example, transparency is, is um, largely policy driven. Uh, a few years ago in Portugal, we had this, um, this problem with um, the health se sector, uh, hepatitis C um, situation where the health minister was saying, in order to uh, treat hepatitis C, we have to spend money on uh, these bottles of uh, um, medical uh, medicines that cost 30,000 euros each. And so the dilemma was, should we tell the public we're spending 30,000 euros on a single uh, bottle of uh, pills, or should, should we omit this information because we want to do the best for, uh, the, for the, the people that have hepatitis C, but at the same time, we don't want to say how much we're spending for, for each bottle. Of, uh, so there's, there's this policy um, sort of specific aspect of transparency. There are also cultural differences. Some work by uh, Stefan uh, Grimm-Lucuis and others has shown that um, in low power distance cultures, transparency is a good thing. Usually the, the, the effects are positive. Whereas, and they, they give us as the example the Netherlands. Whereas in South Korea, which is a high power distance uh, culture, uh, too much transparency can actually have negative effects. And, Finally, regarding corruption levels, um, we in, in when you say negative effects and positive effects, on what? Or which ways? So n negative in effects in terms of uh, the stakeholders or the general population. How the population perceives too much transparency. As in, they don't want, they don't want to know. Uh, as they sort of they react so badly, badly to, to, to to too much information. Okay. Much like in the Portuguese case I was telling you about the, the box of pills. Some people were outraged that you know one box of pills cost 30,000 euros. It's just that money could probably be, be used in some other alternative use with sort of better or much more uh, encompassing results. And with corruption levels, it's actually a similar effect. Uh, 
it, in Western democracies, you tend to find uh, positive effects in uh, sort of transparency, revealing uh, corruption uh, and problems or, or, or um, issues. Whereas in, in societies where corruption is endemic, this can actually lead to uh, disbelief and sort of a, a more depressed uh, approach by citizens of their, their political system. Meaning the political system is corrupt and there's nothing we can do about to change it. So there's all these um, sort of mixed effects of um, uh, transparency on trust in government and how uh, we perceive government legitimacy. At the same time, um, we knew, uh, and this was largely the, the motivation for our own work, we also knew that there were uh, different practices among uh, Portuguese local governments in terms of transparency. Not only differences in, in transparency, focusing transparency on processes rather than outcomes or vice versa, um, but the, the big challenge was how do we actually measure this? How, how do we measure how governments, what, why governments are more or less transparent? And we, we, the, we were contacted, um, and this is what kick-started uh, kick the project, we were contacted by the Portuguese chapter of Transparency International, you're probably familiar with the organization, asking us to develop um, uh, a technically resounding, sounding um, uh, uh, MTI, Municipal Transparency Index, that could um, sort of do the measurement for Portugal and at the same time do something more than other indices in other countries were already doing. We already knew that Spain was developing a similar index and Slovakia as well. So the Transparency International chapters in these countries were already uh, sort of stimulating, uh, creating incentives to, to, to create a, a municipal transparency index. So we reviewed some of the literature and we found that um, there were some indices, uh, there were, there were financial and budget transparency indices, they are, they are very popular, um, I should say. So these are all early, uh, early indices, as you can see, so 2011, 13, so they, these were sort of more popular. Uh, there were some indices based on citizen perceptions, so uh, asking citizens, uh, is this transparency, is this not transparency, how much transparency uh, each piece of information is uh, revealing about um, municipalities, in this case, in New Jersey. And, um, but we, we did find some comprehensive municipal transparency indices, but they were merely additive, so that basically adding items and then dividing them by the total number of items and coming up with a, with a number. And we thought, okay, this is not um, satisfying because we, there are some items at the local level that are rather sensitive. And if a local government is revealing those, they potentially are being more transparent than if another local government is hiding them or not, not, not showing them. And as you can see, even our stakeholders that participated in the project considered that there were items that were rather sensitive and so they should have a bigger weight in the index than other items that were much less sensitive. So this started with, as I said, Transparencia e Integridad Associação Cívica, so the Portuguese chapter of uh, Transparency International and scientific coordinator of four people. Uh, Nuno Ferreira da Cruz, myself, uh, Luís de Souza, and uh, Susana Jorge, from three different institutions. And you, have, you can see more information there, although that's in Portuguese, so probably not very useful. Uh, I will tell you where to go at the end of the presentation for English uh, information. At the time, Nuno was, uh, was doing some work using a technique called multi-criteria decision analysis. Um, and uh, the advantage of this technique was that it relied on a participatory project uh, process rather than just having a, having a bunch of experts in a room, sort of academia, isolated from uh, sort of the real world, uh, coming up with, uh, with the indicators. And what we did was we um, uh, invited 15 representatives from different governmental monitoring 
institutions, civil society organizations, and also from academia, to get together in a room and uh, do two things. First, uh, come up with a list of indicators that uh, could be potentially included in the index. And the initial list had 183 indicators, so quite an encompassing list. We ended up with 76 at the end. So a lot of these indicators were, were just scrapped for different reasons I will explain below. And the second one, the second meeting, was to uh, provide weights and scores to the actual index. So that's the second meeting. I will explain uh, that uh, a little further ahead. So initially, the idea was to collect information from the websites of these 308 municipalities, which uh, uh, times 76 um, indicators, that's about 25,000 pieces of individual information every single year. So that's a lot of work. We have a ton of research assistants uh, help in this. Um, there were some criteria, so we didn't, uh, I'll start with this one, we didn't require the indicators to be mandatory by law. Uh, Portugal, Portugal has an open access uh, uh, legislation, as most countries do, but the, the items on the open access legislation are usually very specific and sort of uh, basically um, highly formal. So. Things that are not required by law are not obviously included in this legislation. And so voluntary items uh, would also be included in the index. The decision was we will build an index not only with things that are mandatory by law, with indicators that are mandatory by law, but also voluntary uh, uh, disclosure of other items. And the second criteria was that all indicators should be universal in nature. So every single municipality would get the chance to um, add a point based on that indicator. I'll give you an example. We have many municipalities that do not have municipal corporations. Municipal corporations are just a, a service delivery type of organization. <coughs> and municipal corporations are uh, sort of like arms length organizations. And they're usually um, not included in the budget of the municipality. But disclosure of information is also very important for municipal, uh, municipal corporations. But we could not include indicators of municipal, uh, municipal corporations because uh, they are not present in all municipalities. So some municipalities don't have them and they would have zero as a result. And that's not lack of transparency, it's simply they don't, do not have that organizational uh, uh, form. Um, so in, in, in this case, all indicators had to be universal. So um, the first meeting, we reduced the number of initial indicators, which was 183, to 76. And um, these 76 indicators are mainly um, uh, ra uh, rated whether the information is present or absent. So it's, if it's present, they uh, score 1. If it's absent, it scored 0. And we came up with seven different dimensions for organizing these uh, 76 indicators. Now, what this um, sort of strategy of having a stakeholder group involved in this process entails is that this list is specific of Portugal. The, the, the method itself could be developed in other countries, but the, the, this list, this specific list, is specific of Portugal. So the, the method is universal, but the, the list, the final list, is Portuguese driven. And it's so much so that um, in the Portuguese case, dimension E, public procurement, and dimension, dimension G, urban planning and land use management, are the most sensitive ones. And you will see that they will have higher uh, weights in the, in the final index. Why is that? Because these are um, sort of traditionally sensitive areas in, in the Portuguese case. Traditionally, this is where corruption suspicions occur. That's where uh, misappropriation uh, of money uh, occurs. Also where sort of, uh, friends and family gets contracts from the municipal uh, government. So 
these were very sensitive areas. And so our panel of, of experts, uh, of, uh, of stakeholders, uh, decided that these would have bigger weights. And as you said, we'll see, they actually do. So next we asked the, the panel to come up with levels of um, transparency. So looking at the, a whole bunch of information uh, uh, available from all these municipalities, what would you say it's the best, the most transparent uh, institution? Well, the first level is the best and, and most relevant and most transparent institution is the one that has all the information disclosed. So all the 76 indicators disclosed in the appropriate manner. So that, that would uh, be the equivalent to 100. And so uh, we asked the panel to come up with all the determinant information, all the important information. All the information is important for transparency, but some is slightly more important. So all the, the panel had to do is from the initial list, from this initial list, come up with 25% uh, of 18 indicators that were the determinant ones. And the same for this, for that, for that. So all the, the dimensions have determinant uh, indicators and important indicators. In the end, we established that, excuse me, uh, excuse the Portuguese here, so in the end, we established that anything above 64 would be considered a highly transparent organization. Something between uh, 30 and 64 would be considered uh, mi moderately transparent, and anything below 30 would be non-transparent or opaque. The index itself, uh, I will talk about uh, sort of the different weights of the dimensions. You can see that public procurement has a bigger uh, weight and the biggest weight is for um, urban planning. But the scoring itself is actually uh, nonlinear. So it's easy, what this picture shows is that it's easy to get a, a moderate, up to a moderate level of transparency, but then it flattens out here which means that you can add more information, but you're still not considered, a, considered very transparent. Uh, this all only occurs at the last few uh, items of, of information. Um, so what we ask the stakeholders to do is, so think about the, a municipality that has a moderate level of transparency in all dimensions. And now compare this base municipality with one municipality that's average in all the items except item A. And then do a similar compar comparison between municipality 8, all average, to municipality 2 with uh, good transparency levels in dimension B. What this exercise does, it allows you to, to, to score or, or to, to weight the dimensions that have more uh, uh, contribution to transparency compared to others. And what the result is, I'll skip these details, this is also the explanation about the scoring, what the result is that some dimensions are actually much more relevant to our stakeholder group than others. And this is the advantage of the process. So the process is good because it, it, it makes sure that the weights reflect the needs of the stakeholders in Portugal. You would be able to come up with a similar um, graphic, uh, graph for, for Ireland, but then the weights would be different because the needs of Irish uh, disclosure information of municipalities would also be different, would, be, would reflect the needs of there are specific to Ireland. So what was the experience? So now some, some results or some, some sort of uh, the result of our uh, five year experience. So we started in 2013, nobody knew us. We were sort of almost made fun of, who are these guys ranking municipalities from one to 308 in terms of transparency? So nobody knew exactly what we were doing and we got 29 responses from municipalities. Oh, also because we, we, we uh, 
uh, check the websites uh, and rank the municipalities and then send the information for each municipality individually asking them to comment sort of as sort of giving them the opportunity to say okay you're wrong because you're not doing this right for some reason so we only got 29 responses in 2013. But the initial sort of visibility of the index nationwide was good. So in the next year, we got 126 municipalities to respond. And then 225, uh, 228 in 2015, 218 in 16, and 190 in 2017. What, what is happening here is that initially, municipalities were not uh, giving us much credit. When they started giving us credit, they started sort of uh, criticizing or coming up with uh, uh, items that we had not been, we, we had not measured for some reason. But of course, all this is done with uh, screenshots of every single piece of information at the time it is taken, so we can prove that the information is there or it's not there. Obviously, we only got to a so about this level, because the ones that are usually at the top one third of the rank do not complain. They are pleased with their scores, so they, they do not complain. Usually the ones that complain are the ones sort of below. There was also a drop because in 2016 and 2017, we diminished, we, we reduced the, the time to for comments from 30 work days, which was Sort of imposing, too imposing for us, to 10 work days. So now the municipality has 10 work days to respond to uh, the, the criticism. And so we started with very low levels um, of transparency in 2013. In 2014, you already see some blues here. There are the highest um, numbers. And you see some more blues here. In 2015, I don't have maps for 2016 and 17. 16 was the best year, was the one with the top um, uh, um, results. Um, I should stress that 2013 and 2017 are years of election, are electoral years. So this also affects the index in some way because every time the uh, executive changes, uh, a lot of the information has to be reposted, right? If, if one, of the, one of the pieces of information is the mayor CV, the CV, the complete CV of the mayor. So once the mayor changes, you have to change the CV as well. And some, some municipalities didn't do that. And that's largely why the maximum falls from 100 in 2016 to 90.7. So there's a slight drop here. But you see that uh, on average, the index goes from 33 to 34, 44.3, 52.4, and 50.9. So it seems like the idea of ranking municipalities and showing this to the press and to the citizens and to the media, to everybody, results in uh, more disclosure of information. So if the index is improving uh, uh, on average, it also means that municipalities are taking care of this information in much more detail. And you see some results for uh, each dimension. You can also see the improvement in general and the drop in 2017. I think we think this drop in 2017 is largely caused by uh, the elections uh, because of the change in, in executives uh, caused a reduction. But you see that in general the trend is positive up to 2017, which is something that sort of confirms our um, desire, our initial desire, to have more information available to citizens. Um, an interesting point about the change in the government is, um, you know, timeliness, is, uh, is that part of any of the indicators in terms of like, you know, is that uh, a component of, you know, this information must be listed within whatever amount of days? Is yeah, well, I can give you the example with budgets. Usually budgets are approved or finalized uh, and available should be, everything should be um, um, sort of closed, so sort of the previous year's accounts should be closed by May. So we do not collect any information before May, 
because if we did, some municipalities would have their budget accounts closed, and so we, they would fulfill the goal, and other ones wouldn't have that. So we, usually we do it in the second part of the year to make sure that the previous uh, budget accounts are approved and sort of closed and ready to, to be displayed online. Um, but if the budget is from two years ago, we count that as zero, so it's not timely. Okay. So that's that's the, those are the concerns for every single. Some people, for example, some municipalities, for example, have um, several different types of plans, uh, strategic plans for education, for environment, etc. If uh, it's a strategic plan of 2010, 2015, and we're in 2017, we count that as zero because it's not a strategic plan, something for the past. Only if it refers to some future um, um, sort of orientation, then we count it as well. So, so you have to check not just that the information is there, but that it's the latest. Whether it is the latest according to our criteria. So we, we, because we have been doing this for so long, in the first year, we had a lot of trouble with that because we, we were not sure whether something would be considered a one or a zero. But over time, we developed these sort of uh, almost heuristic rules that whether, if, if this is sort of up to date, it has to include this and this and this. If it's not, then it's a zero. How would you, I mean, say, say, say like the, the mayor's CD, <laughs> Let's say it's the CV of the mayor from three years ago. You have to check the, the name of the mayor, the name of the CV. Is that, is that what you do? Or? Yes, but, but in that case, in the particular case of the mayor, the concern was, was to have the CV online. Because the initial, what we initially found in 2013 was that the mayor had a short bio, like four line, and they said, they said mayor CV. And that was the mayor CV. And we counted that as zero. And then they asked, but the, the, the mayor CV is online. No, it's not. That's just, just a short bio. If you want to have a one, you have to have the full CV. So there cannot be any holes. This has to do with, with uh, sort of uh, trying to get a conflict of interest between what the mayor is doing now and what he has done. But if there was a CV, it was just the wrong guy, is it going to count as a one or a zero? You know? It's it's one of the items. It's one of the, the, the items in the first dimension. It has 18 indicators, so that's one. Uh, we also have, um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I need to check, um, the short bios of all the members of the, the municipal council. So there, this, this was just what this, we decided that should count as one indicator. Um, you're right. Uh, we we probably should have all the CVs of all the councillors, but that, that's probably a, a different stage. We were coming from very, very low requirements in terms of transparency. Mm -hmm. So this was already an improvement for us. So you, you can question whether uh, the indicators are correct or incorrect, but from the standpoint of the stakeholders, those were considered sort of the minimum, the bare minimum necessary to, to consider some, some municipalities transparent. So, um, so next we, we took our results, our yearly results, so we, for each year we have the index, the, uh, the score, for each municipality and for each dimension within each municipality. And so we went through the literature and came up with a set of factors that can influence differences in transparency across municipalities. And so the demand side factors are somewhat predictable. So sort of the socioeconomic profile of the community, um, wealth and uh, education, average education of the community, Population size and also sort of electoral turnout, for example, as other forms of political or administrative participation. So these are demand side because there are sort of factors that the community pushes for more transparency, whereas supply side factors are from the side of government uh, itself. Sort of the profile of the head of the executive, uh, the gender, the edu previous education, 
um, and also the age of the, gen of the mayor. Uh, the profile of the municipal executive in Portugal has very specific municipal executive rules. We can have minority executives, for example. So there are a few of other uh, effects. Um, also, the, um, the margin of victory in elections. We have a lot of mayors that won elections by a, a landslide. And so these are very comfortable in the situation. They can reveal all the information they, went, they want that nothing happens, ever happens. They will get, keep getting reelected. We also had a term uh, limit in, in, uh, in stated um, in 2013 on. So many of the mayors that ran for the 2013 election had been mayors for seven, eight, sometimes ten terms. There was one particular mayor that was mayor since the Democratic Revolution of 74, which is kind of insane. It's 38 years, I think, at the time, something, 40 years, 14 years. Um, now we have a term limit. So now the mayors can only do up to three terms. So that there's a, a big difference there. And we also, um, sort of tested for administrative capacity, in particular ICT capacity, because this deals with websites, um, but not, no sort of conclusion um, was obtained on that. Um, so some results, we find that female mayors have on average an MTI score five points above male mayors. And this is not exactly a surprise. There have been results that uh, hinted at this in previous studies. But this, this is a very strong um, result for the Portuguese case. We also found out that each mayoral term would reduce the, the index by about 0.88 um, points. So for that uh, uh, mayor uh, of the city of Braga, uh, the, the index would be about nine points lower uh, because he was in office for 10 terms. And he was actually known for not being very transparent <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, dealings. Um, margin of victory has a positive effect on local transparency. This was somewhat of a surprising result, but largely be, we think that there, were, um, there was a uh, sort of a comfortable effect going on. So the mayors that were winning by a large margin simply revealed more information because they, they didn't have much to lose. On the demand side, um, higher unemployment rates in municipalities would uh, decrease the index, the transparency index, I guess, because people were more concerned with sort of day-to-day uh, -day, um, issues and problems than rather transpa municipal transparency per se. Uh, the average age of residents, um, as, as it goes up, uh, the, the index uh, levels go down. Not very surprising. It's a, an internet-based, ICT-based um, index, so uh, older citizens have more difficulty accessing the internet and dealing with the internet um, aspect. Socioeconomic status does not seem to be associated with transparency level, with the exception, as I mentioned, of unemployment rates. The introduction of term limits in Portugal effectively after the 2013 uh, local election contribute to an increase in political competition and this presumably produced some benefits in terms of government transparency. We found some low levels of transparency um, and uh, we think that partly the, there is insufficient demand from the population to, to demand more information from uh, local uh, executives and this is more prevalent uh, presumably in local and, and, uh, and uh, municipalities with lower cultural and educational levels. So the whole motivation, and this I think is the final slide, the whole motivation for creating this index was to uh, provide citizens with information and this idea that we stress in a, a couple of papers we published uh, that citizens should be, as much as possible, armchair auditors. So people that demand more from the local governments in different ways. And, and this um, is likely to lead to more accountability by local officials, 
uh, improve the quality of uh, government decision making and hopefully help to prevent or mitigate corruption. Not uh, incidentally, now we have a lot more information about public procurement than we had uh, back in 2013. And this is also true nationally. Now we have a national database with all the uh, public procurement contracts done by national government, uh, by the national government as well. The availability of information can also help to unravel private interests, which can conflict with the collective interest. This is a sort of endemic problem in, in, in Portuguese culture, where we are a small country. You can argue, well, Ireland is even smaller. But in Portugal, being small has a consequence. Is that the likelihood that someone in government provides contracts to family members or uh, friends or prior college uh, uh, colleagues, whatever uh, thing you, you may imagine, it's very uh, prominent. So this was uh, a concern for us since the very beginning. And we think more transparency can help at least unravel some of these problems. Um, and make actors accountable for all decisions and actions taken or omitted and the reasons that informed them. So some future research, what, what are we doing with all this information? So we have a large data set with all, all this information, not only regarding the different dimensions, but also um, the overall ranks of all municipalities. Uh, we want to explore determinants of the variation across dimensions because there are municipalities that do a lot better in some dimensions than others and we want to know why that's the case. We, we don't have any prior expectations so we have to sort of dig in through the data and explore that. We also suspect, especially by looking at those maps that I, I've showed you, we also suspect there are neighborhood effects. So if one municipality or a, a badly performing municipalities tend to be clustered and also uh, well performing, good, uh, good performing municipalities tend to be also clustered. So there might be some sort of diffusion effects. Uh, municipalities that see their neighbor doing, revealing more information are also likely to reveal more information themselves. So but we want to explore this because we, we still don't have any spatial um, idea about how this, this progresses. If you want to read uh, some more information about this, uh, we have published two papers. Uh, one that explains how the index was constructed, sort of this presentation, uh, measuring local government transparency. This is public management review piece uh, back in 2016. And in 2017, we have uh, the analysis of the actual results uh, regarding uh, what determines uh, performance. Uh, of, uh, in terms of transparency of these different municipalities. This is a forthcoming piece on government information quarterly, has been in press since 2017, it's not all out yet. Um, so thank you. Okay, you thank you, Antonio. Questions. Okay, we've got time for questions or comments. Philip? Just a couple, Antonio. Okay, the first one is, I may have already addressed this, but it seems to me that uh, one hypothesis would be that transparency costs money, and so the ability to provide the resources for that would have something to do with the local area you're in, and so it might have something to do with kind of economic activity that's in a particular municipality. So that's one set of questions. And the other one is, so is there any information about the impact of transparency? And there the hypothesis might be that more transparent municipalities actually deliver higher quality services. Mm -hmm. So that's the question about is anyway getting at that. Okay. Yeah, I can. Well, the first one is sort of easier to tackle. Um, f well, first we we ran um, regressions trying using different measures of the capacity of the organization, number of local government employees, number of local government IT uh, information technology employees, and none of that came. Uh, has, uh, came up as relevant in terms of explaining the differences. But I think sometimes even the sort of anecdotal uh, evidence is much more revealing. All these municipalities are rural, poor, and better performing than the big cities. So uh, at least the population uh, 
size, it's not relevant. So the size of the municipality. You can argue, well, but a municipality can be, a municipality can be large and have a lot of, uh, a, a big budget, but may not sort of have uh, a more developed professional um, uh, set of employees to deal with this. But there's usually some association. So you, you can expect that uh, municipalities like uh, Lisbon or Porto will, will do better or should do better than municipalities that are uh, rural uh, and sort of less professional in terms of their staff. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And there's, there's a good reason for that, which uh, I think it's, it's related to the, the amount of information we are asking for is not technical, technically demanding. It's just uh, sometimes it's hard to reveal because you have to show too much of what you're doing. It's al almost like opening the government. And that, that, I think, that's what's causing the resistance. Not, not necessarily that it's technically difficult, but it's because you're, you're showing what you do. So the second... Uh, the second question is, do, does transparency relate to the quality of the services uh, that the municipalities deliver? Well, in a certain sense, we, we are not... Well, first of all, we are not able to, to come up with definitive answers regarding that. But uh, because we have because we have two items that are related to the services that are being provided, which are uh, this item C, local taxes, rates, service charges, and regulations, the quality of the service itself is not there. But, uh, for example, one thing that we found out was that if uh, a municipality had a municipal pool, which is very common in Portugal, uh, uh, a citizen could not go online and check what the rates uh, for the pool are. So that sort of basic information, how much do I pay if I decide to go to the pool one afternoon, was not there. So by, by having this uh, dimension with the with all the local taxes, rates, service charges, and regulations published online, we guarantee that at the very least the, the citizen has information regarding those services. It's not necessarily that the services are good, but at least the information is there. Whether the pool is clean or not, that's a different issue, and obviously we, we cannot know that. And this, the, the, the other one, the relationship with citizens as customers, one of the items, for example, in this, that there are eight indicators. One of the items is there whether there is a local ombudsman. Um, and many municipalities don't have a local ombudsman. And so because some do have one, then so there's the, the diffusion effect. So why is my neighbor having this and I don't have it? We, we should create one as well. And so this, this is sort of not necessarily, again, not necessarily the quality of the service, but at least getting one mechanism that ensures that the quality of service is achieved. The ombudsman is actually very important. Okay. So. <coughs> it's very related. Um, I was wondering about the accuracy of the information. Is there any way for you to verify, like for the pool, for example, they post some charge? Do you know if that's an accurate? Uh, we don't check that. Okay. We don't check that. But, but some of the, um, the accuracy because accuracy and quality are the right. quality of the information are related, and what we found out in the very beginning is that um, we have something in Portugal called the report of the rights of the opposition. So, because the opposition very often uh, um, of the executive uh, is uh, sort of questioning the executive about certain decisions, they they should have the right to have a report at the end of the year reporting all the activity that the opposition did in terms of questioning the executive. But some executives refuse to publish that. What we find out, what we found out after we started was that they, the executives were starting to report it, but they were doing the bare uh, minimum. So they were saying, okay, we were questioned about this and this and this, and we answered this way, but usually very short reports. 
once we started scoring at the zero, sort of lacking the basic quality in terms of that report, then they started reporting more information. So again, it's, it's really a matter of creating social pressure to change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Regarding that kind of uh, incentive process, did you try checking, checking whether there's a relation between getting a low score in one year and you know, improving the performance? Sorry, I didn't. Did you try yeah, trying to address, like, running some question? Checking whether there's a relation between getting a low score in your year and then with improving considerably your performance in a subsequent No, we haven't tried that. But, but we had a lot of the municipalities that uh, that complain here. So the ones that manifest their dis, uh, sort of disagreement in terms of the scores are the ones that score low. And then in we tell them, okay, the reason we, you had so such a low score was because you missed this and this and this and this. We, we basically list them where they failed. The following year, they come up fifth or third in the overall rank because they got the information, they wanted to change it, they did change. There are some municipalities that we know are not paying attention to this, so they simply ignore it and they score systematically low. So there is some effect regarding that. There's benchmarking, and Portugal. The, the advantage is that Portugal is a is a, a small country, so it's it's easy to know where you stand in terms of this this rank. And and this is probably a national law. We are very um, we 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 are often accused of being envy envious. Is it the word envious? So you, if you score low, you want to beat your opponents, your neighbors, and, and you, you, I mean, you just do it just because you want to do that. So there's some competition effect in, in this. Okay. Any other questions or comments?